Hey guys, we're in the shop as usual making progress on the Dark Arrow 1 prototype. I know it's been a while since we've done one of these shop life videos, but it's because we've been busy. So we've got a lot of projects going on. Let's take some time to get up to speed on what we've got going on lately. Okay, so we're looking at the firewall right now. I've got the engine pulled off the airframe and that's because we've been working on fabricating this titanium firewall heat shield. So I've got it positioned in place right now temporarily. A couple components thrown on here just to hold it in place while I'm working on it. Uh, I cut out the titanium from a larger piece of stock, drilled all the holes, cut out the profile, and that was kind of interesting because the machining properties and working properties of titanium are a little bit different than say aluminum or stainless steel. Uh, it's a little tricky to drill and cut, but I ended up figuring it out. And the reason we picked titanium over say stainless steel is because uh, it's lighter. And for this size component, it's about a pound of weight that we're able to shave over say stainless. So that's uh, beneficial. The other reason we picked titanium is just because it's got really high temperature capability, which is good for a firewall application. Uh, the work I have left to do is I got to install a nut plate or a couple nut plates for this opening here. There's going to be a plate that covers this up and this is where all the wires feed through from the engine into the avionics. So got to get that cover fitted up and then uh, it should be done. And uh, when we get into production, we're going to have this component CNC cut either with uh, laser or water jet or plasma cut. Uh, we'll figure that out at that point. But it'll be a finished component so builders don't have to go through the effort of cutting the titanium like I did. Uh, I did a little bit more work on the cold side of the firewall or back here on the back side, uh, installing some fasteners and nut plates. So I'll show you that. Let's take a trip into the cabin to check that out. Okay, we're sitting inside the cabin right here. This is the pilot side, co-pilot side, and we're looking into the forward baggage compartments. I have the instrument panel removed right now. And the work I did on the back side of the firewall are these bonded nut plates. So these eight nut plates here are for the ignition coils. These two are for the oil separator. And then down below here, I got four more smaller nut plates. Those are for the oil cooler. And the benefit of these nut plates being bonded on the back side here is that I can install the fasteners for these items from the firewall side. I don't have to crawl inside here and hold a wrench on a nut. It makes the installation of those items a one person operation, which is good for serviceability. And then down here I have the fuel pumps mounted and then I built the fuel lines that run up on the firewall, back side of the firewall up to this bulkhead fitting there. And then I got a couple more things to do with the fuel pumps, running lines back to the fuel sump, but otherwise they're pretty close to done. But yeah, really excited about these uh, click bond nut plates. I think they're gonna be really good. Okay, so this is the battery box that is gonna be mounted um, on the engine side of the firewall. Back plate here with two straps going across for each battery. There's a couple flanges in the center there that serve as, as stopping plates for the batteries. The top battery will slide in from the top, the batter bottom battery will slide in from the bottom so we can demonstrate that here quick and then we've got these flanges here with nut plates on them so you can slide them um, in to locate the battery and then on the back side of this plate we have countersink holes to keep that flush um, up against the firewall. So once your batteries are in, then you've got this cooling box cover here. That will go over the entire assembly. And you can kind of see inside here, maybe. So there is a layer, I believe it's half inch on top and three eighths on the side layer of air will be able to go over the whole battery assembly. We're gonna have a one inch scat duct coming uh, intake through that hole there. And then a top to seal up the whole box. Uh, this will be, have nut plates on it and then you can screw this on um, once all your batteries are installed and ready to go. And then you can pick up this whole assembly and put it on the firewall. Okay, so I got a couple more steps to finish up the box. Um, I gotta cut an exit hole for the air to come out of in the bottom. Gotta rivet on this flange for the scat duct to attach to. I'm gonna attach some other electrical components to the roof of the box. 
and then gonna make some uh, special pass-through studs to get the electricity out of the box. Um, oh, I gotta put some nut plates on the lid so you can attach the lid and seal up that whole area and uh, then it should be good to go to mount on the firewall. Alright, so this is where it's located on the firewall. Some of you may have watched the en engine installation video and seen just the uh, mounting bracket and then it was actually some heavier boxes uh, instead of the straps so we've since modified that to be uh, four straps two for each battery like I said so that slides onto the click bond studs and then the cooling box will slide over that um, this will all be assembled on the bench like I said so uh, you'll slide on both the back plate and the cooling box all at once um, but yeah you can see there that's where it's gonna sit a little bit of how it's gonna look and so yeah we're looking good so far all right guys so we just got done machining this plate to hold all of the remaining avionics that'll sit aft of the cockpit in the dark era one this is basically the last remaining piece of our avionics architecture that we had to do you've got your remote mount com box here you've got your main atahars box here and then you've got your backup atahars uh, all of these kind of have common functionality here that need to be shared, uh, especially with like your pedo and static lines. So we wanted that all to exist on a single plate. The way we did that is by having uh, a single feed point here for uh, your pedo and static lines, as well as your angle of attack. And then that gets split off uh, between the two boxes. So the plate was really nice for organizing all that. Uh, it'll also be nice once we get all the wiring here, we'll run that to a central plug that'll go here. Uh, as well as the COM antenna and ADS-B antenna will run through here. So that way once it's installed um, in the aft section of the cockpit, which I'll show you in a second, um, you'll just be able to run these connections up through the bottom of the plate and not have to worry about doing the individual wiring uh, on top of that while you're up inside the plane. So here in the CAD, you can see how the plate will mount on top of these rails, which will also be made of this SORC panel material. And uh, if we swing over to the plane, I'll show you how that gets installed. All right, guys, so we're back here in the aft section of the Dark Arrow 1 fuselage. And this plate, as you can see, uh, will feed up through the main gear door here. And this is the only spot you'll have access to once the aft skin is installed. So the plate had to be designed to fit up through there and it'll sit right here on top of those rails that I showed you earlier in the CAD, that'll be made out of SORC panel. get you guys up to speed on the nose gear for the Dark Hero 1. Uh, we've recently done some redesign for the retract mechanism. So what we're looking at is a assembly view of some of those components. So we've got our engine mount here, um, our firewall component here, and I can actually play with the animation here and get this to move. So we've replaced our stepper motor with a linear actuator, and this is kind of the motion that we've got going on and then right in here we've got some of our locking mechanism and if you take a look over here uh, I've got a lot of the components already machined out some of the more recent ones that we've machined out are the retract links we've got our lower ones our upper ones and then we've got our mounts for our links that we recently did and then the the locking mechanism. So I only got a few more uh, components to go here and then we're gonna be all done with that, get this all assembled and then do our drop testing and then it'll be on to the main gear for the aircraft. So pretty exciting seeing all these parts materialize and come together. Um, really excited to see how these get all fully assembled and get this thing actuating. So look forward to that. All right guys, that's all in the shop for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about anything that we showed, leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer you. Uh, other than that, I don't know. You can do the like and subscribe thing and uh, we'll catch you next time. This is what uh, keeps me going in the shop 
Freezy Pops, absolutely love these things. I'll let you in on a little tip though. This is a pro tip here. To get into them, use scissors, okay? Don't just be like gnarly or something, bite it off with your teeth. None of that, use scissors, okay? Nice clean cut on the top there, and then you'll still have those sharp corners that poke into the edge of your mouth. So you gotta put chamfers on the edge there, and it's nice and smooth. Works every time. Pro tip.